Today, I will try to explain you the logic of pointers. When you compile a code, every function, every variable, everything is first placed into the memory, executed after. So this is our RAM. In other words, memory grid. Think this memory grid as a hotel. And each of these squares are hotel rooms. So if you write something like this into the compiler, the operating system will look for a suitable place in the memory and place this variable into that room. Let's say our x is placed here. This is our x. And the value will be placed inside that room. So naturally, every room in that hotel will have a door number, the room number, that indicates the address in the memory. So let's say, for example, the room number of this guy is 200. Every byte in the memory has a room number, door number. If you magnify this square here, you will see that it forms from four bytes because this integer takes four bytes. So actually here is 200, here is 201, here is 202, and this room is 203. So this integer takes four bytes, four room. Remember, every byte has an address. But for demonstration purposes, assume each square here has four bytes because we will place integer into those rooms. So remember, this square consists of four single bytes as seen in here. So if we want to place an integer next to this room, the address of the room will be 204. Let's erase this and continue. This is where the pointers come up. Pointers are variables just like this. The only difference is they hold the address of another location. Not integers like 5, 6 or not characters. They only hold the address of another location. So if I want to define a pointer, let's say int p, I only need to use this asterisk notation to specify that this variable will hold an address. So I can give only an address of another variable or another place. So the operating system will also allocate a space for p. Let's say this is our p. So the value inside the p here will be the address of x. So it's 200. Now this is a pointer because it points it shows another location in the memory grid. As we mentioned before, you can only give the address of another thing in the memory to this variable. And naturally, 200 is placed into another room, so it will also have a door number, let's say 150. So don't forget, everything placed in the memory will have an address, the door number, the room number in that hotel. So if I want to declare a T here, Let's say I want to define a variable t here. And I want t to hold the address of p. The address of p is 150. So this way I'm holding a pointer because this points to this address. I'm holding a pointer to another pointer. I can define it like this. This will be of type int. It will be a pointer of another pointer and the name will be t. So it's a pointer of another pointer, so it will take the address of another pointer. So you can give the address of P. And naturally, T will also have a door number. Let's say 380. So by saying X, if you want to print X, the 5 will be printed out to the screen. And by using the address of X, you're actually meaning the door number of the location where the x is located. So it is 200. And we are using the asterisk notation to define. And we can also use the asterisk notation, the same notation, to resolve that address, to dereference that address. We are dereferencing here. We are pointing here. This means resolve 200 and tell me what's in the 200. It's 5. So as you can see here, these two signs are opposite to each other. So let's have a look at t. 
If I want to print T, printf T, it will give me 150, the content of T. This is an address, so I can resolve that. I can dereference that. I can go to that address and look what's inside that. This is 150. This is resolve 150. Who is in 150? If we look who is in 150, it's 200. And 200 is also an address. So I can resolve that too. I can keep resolving 150. If I resolve it, I get 200. And if I resolve 200, let's resolve 200, it's five. And you can't keep resolving it because if I want to resolve one more time, this means resolve five. This is five. Resolve five, but five is not a valid address. It's a pure integer. You can't go any further. You will end up only here. This is basically pointer. They are variables that points to another place. That is why it's called pointer. It's pointing another address. And be careful about that. The type of the pointer should be compatible with the type of the target address. If x is integer and the pointer is integer, they are compatible. You can't define a char pointer to an integer address. Be careful about that. Let's erase this. So let's have a look at the scenario. We have two functions, one main function and one another function here. So when you compile the code, the functions will be placed into different areas in the memory, in our RAM, in our hotel. So let's say this is our main block. This is my main block. And we have X inside that main block, which is seven, and Y, which is 10. Let's say this is my X, the value is seven, and this is my Y, the value is 10. So let's assume that they are placed into an address something like 410, 570. Keep in mind that the real addresses are in hexadecimal format. So this is only for demonstration purposes for you to understand it clearly. And I will have another function here. Let's say it's placed here in the memory. This is my function, my second function. My second function has two variables. One is integer x, let's say here, this is my x inside the function. And one is y, this is x, this is y. This square is y, this square is x. One is integer and one is a pointer to an integer location. So be careful here. When you initialize these variables and come to this line, the x will be sent to the function, will be passed to the function by value. The value of x will be passed to this x. It is 7. The 7 will be here, will be passed to this function as a value. But here in this line, the address of y will be passed to the function, not the 10. The address of y here, this is my y by the way, address of y is 570. It will be passed to here as an address. So by doing this, I get a pointer to this location. When I jump to this function, I'm no longer in this area. I'm in this area right now. So if I execute this line, make the x 25, but be careful, make the x inside the function 25, not in the main function, this function, because I'm in here inside the second function. So let's make it 25. By changing this, I couldn't be able to affect anything here. But when I jump to this line, this means the value of y is 570. Resolve 570 and make the content 30. Make the inside 30. Let's resolve 570, it's 10, and make the inside 30. So as you can see, I will be able to change another area in the memory. So this is what actually pointers do. You can access to a memory location directly without referring any variable name. So let's get back to our previous example. In here, we could be able to change the value of x by saying something like x is 30 or something like that. But since the p is holding the address of x, I can use this notation to change the content of x using the pointer. Because this means go to this address, which is 200, resolve it, dereference it. Resolving is a term made up by me, by the way and make the contents sturdy. So if you execute this code, it will make this location 
30. So this is basically the pointers. They are mostly used to access to a memory location directly without using any variable or any other tricks. So if you have a pointer, you can access to that memory location and do whatever you want in that location. And now we will look at this in a compiler with actual codes. And here is our code and the values from our example. So I define x here, it's a pure integer and the value is 5, as you can see here. When I run the code, it will be placed into a suitable place in the memory. In this line, I'm defining a p, which is a pointer, because I use the asterisk notation. And then I gave the address of x to p, like here. So whatever the x's address, p will hold it. Then I define t in this line, as you can see. And I gave the address of p which is itself a pointer. So T is now pointer to another pointer. It's a pointer of pointer. If I want to print these eight line, let's see what will come up. And this is the result. In the first line, we are printing the value of X. In the second line, the address of X. And you can notice that two and three is the same because P's value here is the address of x and the fourth line resolve p which means resolve this address this address is the x's address so if i resolve it i get five in the fifth line this time i want to see the address of p not the value of p the address of p which is here so this is the address of p and the sixth line i want to print the value of t the value of t is the address of p here as you can see fifth and sixth line is the same and the seventh line the reference t it means resolve the value of t resolve 150 if i resolve 150 i get this x's address in seven as you can see seventh and second lines are the same and at the end resolve t two times it means resolve 150 once and we get 200 and if we resolve 200 in other words resolving one more time you get five here in the eighth line so basically with pointers you can directly access to memory locations and manipulate the contents of that memory locations so you can do something like this after executing this line if you run the code you will see that the value of x is now 10 because this is an assignment operation we said that resolve t two times we are ending up here and make it 10 and now the value of x is changed we assigned 10 to this location so it is 10 now okay with our second example let's look at the scenario here so as you can see in main function I have two variables one is x and it's equal to 7 and one is y and it's equal to 10 before we go into this line I wanted to print the value of x and y then we call this function after the function is called I wanted to print x and y again as you can see here in first and second line our x and y values are printed as usual but when we get to this line the value of x as you can follow here the value of x is passed to the function here the 7 has came to here and the address of y here which is here in the picture came here as two parameters of the function my second function and when i enter the function inside i'm now here in this address block i left the main block i stopped here and jumped to here in this area i'm working now i made the x 25 but this is a local variable it's only valid inside the function it is defined so i'm changing the x here it's totally independent from the x here so making this 25 is just pointless in this scenario because when we leave the function this will be all gone but in the second line with the referencing as you can see go to this address whatever the y's address is in this picture is 570 y is 570 go to this address the reference it resolve that address and make the contents 30 
So I'm changing the content of y in the main function from my second function. So with using pointer, which is pointing this address, I would be able to change the value inside another function. And after the function has been executed and I return back to this line and continue, I wanted to print x and y again after the operations made in the function. So as you can see, x's value is not 25. It's not changed. It's all gone when this function has ended. But the y is now 30 because we changed the y value here from this function using pointer. This is one of the standard use case of the pointers and we will see more complex examples to understand operations on address locations. Thank you for listening.